What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 98 and we start today's episode by seeing that Laporta is not going to Roma and also Stoke aren't going to match the counter off for Buffal either. Uh, Stoke came out to us regarding Buffal and instead of going £16.5 million, pounds, we just said no because that's nowhere near good enough for our Moroccan playmaker. And as for Laporta, we wanted £65 million pounds for Roma, which obviously wasn't going to happen. We just did it just in case and uh, yeah, it's pretty obvious now that Laporta and Buffal will be staying here at Vicarage Road, which is totally fine with me and also Sunderland wanted Mario Balotelli we said no he's our top scorer this season with eight goals in the Premier League we'd rather keep him here and also PSG came back to us regarding Coutinho now in the last episode we did put in a bid for the guy of zero pounds plus we found a straight swap deal but of course we found out the day later that he decides to go to Valencia instead and uh, he'll join the club once his contract expires come the end of the season and then PSG come back to us and say no and I was like well obviously not he's already agreed to go to Valencia so I'm not really sure why PSG decided to uh, give us that email there because we knew he was already going to Valencia but uh, still following up putting a bid for this guy right here Alex Donnarumma of Colorado Rapids 74 overall central midfielder 19 years old he's Italian and I don't think I need to tell you whose regen it is but I will anyway it's Andrea Pirlo or Andrea Pirlo's regen I would love to get this guy here at Watford 74 overall just 19 years old very impressive indeed now, I would take the point that obviously in this Watford team, we've got a fantastic squad. Our central midfield area is very, very good. We've got Lampard's region. We've got Gerrard's region. Do we really need PLO's region alongside players like Lewis Cook as well, who's a, a really decent squad player in this team? Do we really need him? Well, to be honest, what I'm looking at here is the fact that in this Watford team, with the money in this January transfer window, we don't really have any money to do anything really at all unless we, sold, uh, unless we sell one of our big players, which quite frankly, probably isn't going to happen because you see him right now, now, transfer bids are coming in for the likes of Buffal and Luke Shaw and Laporta and Balotelli. We don't really want to sell them, though, unless we get a ridiculous amount of money, which the clubs aren't going to match. So because of that, we're not going to be signing anyone in this January transfer window unless we buy someone like this. And I was thinking PLO's regen is probably one of the most interesting signs we could make still. So I'm going to put in a bid for him, and we shall wait and see what happens there. But uh, still, we're doing Arsenal here for the first game of today's episode here as Arsenal come and takes on the Vicarage Road. Our last game was a score draw against Liverpool. That finished 1-1, and and this game ended up as a goalless draw because the final chance to game fell in a stoppage time here as William Carvalho went for goal. The Portuguese holding midfielder shot goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick. And it was how the game would finish. Final score, Watford nil, Arsenal nil. So good to get our first clean sheet in a couple of games, but another draw for us. And in the Premier League right now, we've only had two wins in our last, what, six games I think it is? It's been a pretty inconsistent run of form anyway. Now we're beginning to slow down a little bit, which is uh, quite funny because obviously a few episodes ago you would have heard me say that this game in a way can be quite easy at times and a little bit routine for us to sort of walk to victories, but now we're starting to struggle a little bit. We're still undefeated in the Premier League, yes, but we're not playing as good as we were at the start of the season. So yeah, in a way I'm sort of relieved in a sense because now the games are becoming a little bit more difficult and it is a bit more challenging. But uh, still falling out a bit for Buffal from Hamburg and also Athletic Madrid wants to take Nathaniel Klein. Uh, we say no to Atletico Madrid. We're keeping Klein here and also be foul with Hamburg. Unless we get a lot of money for him, we're going to say no. But uh, Jeremy Haber, the Canadian attacker midfielder, is on his way to Gretzi Road to join Crew on a two-year loan deal. Now, obviously, Haber and Djokovic were the two real stars of the Canada team in the World Cup. But Haber, unlike Djokovic, isn't going to get much game time this season. He's already had a three-month injury. Only played once or possibly twice this year alongside that injury game where he uh, got his uh, three-month injury. So for Jeremy Haber to go out on loan for two years I think it's the best thing to do we'll keep Djokovic here but Haber can go uh, out on loan and hopefully develop away in the lower leagues but uh, still following that as well you can see a transfer came in here for Dominic Oorfa Stuttgart won him for 7.5 million pounds but even though he has declined his contract here and says he wants to leave the club I still want to keep him 23 years old 78 overall said before I really really like this guy if Klein wasn't here I'd have all my faith in him as the right back so unless you've got a lot of money we're going to say no and also Hamburg came back to us regarding Foul said they're taking for 17.5 million pounds. We say no, give us 30 million pounds, and we shall wait and see what they say. Because the Moroccan is a really decent attacking midfielder. I'd like to keep him here personally, but if we get that kind of money for him, I'm not gonna say no. Uh, of course, Bufal was our record signing at the time at the beginning of the second transfer window, or I should say second uh, season with Watford, when uh, we signed him for 21.25 million pounds. And I know some of you guys thought it was a little bit of a flop here at Vicarage Road, and that's totally fine to think that because he never really did as well 
as we were hoping. And of course, he never grew any ratings either. Remained at 81 for his entire uh, career so far here at Watford. But he has only been here for uh, now three, uh, should say two full seasons. And of course, this is the uh, half season so far. But uh, Buffal never really worked out the way we were hoping, but I still really do like him. He scored some cracking goals already in this series, and I would like to keep him here personally. But we should have to wait and see what happens. But uh, still, taking on Bournemouth here for the second game of today's episode here. In the 12th minute, Loftus Cheek summed up what kind of season he's having here at Vicarage Road. I really do like the guy, but uh, Ryan Taylor found him there in acres of space with a corner, and that headed effort went almost behind for a throw in. But uh, it was still Watford nil, Bournemouth nil in this game. In the 25th minute, though, we win ourselves a penalty, and our first penalty in a few games to the Ukrainian sprints forward here, goes for goal, does get a shot away and get it on target. Karius makes the save, but Tommy Elphick takes him down in the process, and the referee gives a spot kick. Now, this one could have been seen as debatable by quite a few people, but to me, that seemed like a definite penalty. As he's going through the shoot there, he does get taken down. There's a lot of contact on the boots. I don't think you can argue with that one. The referee does give a penalty, and Mario Balotelli dispatches it as well. So Balotelli converting the penalty makes it Watford 1, Bournemouth 0, and Balotelli, our top scorer this season so far, gets goal number 9. So Sunderland wanted to take Balotelli. We said no, and this is why. Last season, our top scorer. So far, our top scorer this season as well. He does open the scoring from the spot and make it Watford 1, Bournemouth 0. So yes, to some people I know, the penalty may have seemed a little bit debatable, but to me, if you're going to take out the man like that, whether he's going through the shoot or not, I don't really care. In my opinion, that is a definite penalty. But uh, still, Watford 1, Bournemouth 0. Bournemouth had a good chance to equalise there, but it was a good save by Butland, and it was still 1-0. And 14 minutes after the restart here, another good chance for Bournemouth. Lee Tomlin gets played forward and goes for goal. Gets the shot away, but it goes wide to the post and behind for a goal kick. So still, Watford 1, Bournemouth 0. And as the game was coming to its close here, 12 minutes for the end, Buffal picks up the ball and finds Mario Balotelli, the goal scorer. He rolls it through to his strike partner, Neymar, down the left-hand side. And the Brazilian has acres of space here to work some magic, and work some magic he would. He hasn't had the best of seasons, his debut year here at Vicarage Road. I'm not going to deny that, but we can forgive him when he scores glorious goals like this. And this season, I haven't really scored too many skill goals, or this series, really. I haven't scored too many skill goals. And this is only a two-skill move, sort of, uh, uh, move, if you will, uh, to finish the, uh, the chance off with. But this was still absolutely beautiful from Neymar. The way he cut inside there from the left-hand side so quickly. The, the, the footwork was just unbelievably quick. Seriously, he went past the defender in a blink of an eye and a great finish as well. That is a contender for goal of the season in my eyes. Absolutely beautiful stuff from Neymar. And he does get goal seven in the Premier League this season. So final score, Watford 2, Bournemouth 0. Balotelli and Neymar, the strike partnership, which hasn't really worked wonders this season like I was hoping. Does work in this game regardless and we do get the victory and do return to winning ways with the 2-0 scoreline. So another clean sheet for us. Very pleased with that. Balotelli with a goal and assist. He was my man in the match. And again, this strike partnership, I had really high hopes for it. You know, Neymar and Balotelli hasn't really worked fantastically well, but they've still, uh, still, uh, still scored 16 goals between them. And I guess that is uh, good to see, if nothing else. And what a lovely goal it was by Neymar as well. Maybe I'm making too much out of it, but the skills there was uh, wonderful to see. But uh, still, Buffal is not going to go to Hamburg. They put a bit of 19.5 million pounds and we just said no. And uh, Stuttgart aren't going to pursue Domico for any more either. Now, I know I could have accepted that bid from Buffal and looked to buy another player. But the fact of the matter is, Buffal, I like him as a squad player. I really, really do. As a tackle midfielder, he does a really decent job for us. And I'd rather keep him here, really, because I'm not too confident I could sign a better player with the money we would receive for him. And also, as well, uh, Marco Ryan Taylor is wanted by Barcelona for £30 million. We, of course, say absolutely no way. Marco, the magician, is staying here at Vicarage Road. And also, Lukaku is wanted by Udinese for 19 points. 5 million pounds. Not a bad bid this one since we signed him in the summer for 10 million pounds plus Vidra, but I really like the guy as a backup striker, so unless we get a ridiculous amount of money, we are going to say no. And yet another bid came for Buffal as well. He's wanted by a lot of clubs right now. Hoffenheim, another German side, wanted him for, uh, for 16.5 million pounds. We asked for 35 million. I wish I went and see what they say. And also Colorado Rapids did, uh, did accept a deal for Alex Donnarumma, the regen of PLO of 4.6 million pounds plus a random Canadian right back. The reason we're swapping him to Colorado Rapids is quite simple. Now, I know a lot of you guys may have been pointing out and may have been uh, watching these uh, emails come by and saying, oh my God, why do you keep on putting that player in that uh, bid? They don't want to take that right back. The reason being is because here at Watford, he's not going to get much game time. I can't seem to loan him out or sell him. So instead, if we can just give him to a club, he'll get some first team football there and hopefully he will start to develop. But uh, still, Donnarumma is going to come in for £4.6 million pounds, plus Maxime Piet, I think it was, the random Canadian right back. I'm totally fine with that deal as well because as you can see, Donnarumma 
summer, you'll see his stats here. Pilo's region actually looks really, really good. 74 overall at just 19 years old. Some very good stats already. The only negative about him is that he's only got a one-star weak foot, which is a little bit of a letdown, really, isn't it, for Pilo's region? But still looks pretty tasty, not going to lie. As a 19-year-old, looks pretty decent as a squad player. We'll give him some game time and see how he does. So Andrew Pilo's region, or Andrew Pilo's region, however you want to say it, signs for Watford. Very pleased with that, and that does end the episode. So thank you very much for watching the video, guys. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like. Say so much appreciate. And of course, really just help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.